So I could make this video 20 seconds long and tell you, yes, this game is incredible and you should buy it. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. Okay, not really. Let's get into this cosmic ocean of an RPG. I've spent over eight hours with the 40 minute demo and have even started recording my own let's play for this game. Don't worry about spoilers. The footage you are going to see throughout this video is from that demo or the first hour or so of the game. First off, Sea of Stars is a love letter to classic RPGs. It takes the best elements from the golden age of 90s RPGs and combines them with modern design sensibilities. So if you're a fan of games like Chrono Trigger or Final Fantasy or even better, Super Mario RPG, you're going to feel right at home in Sea of Stars. The first thing I want to point out here is that this game is pixel perfect. It is so beautifully done. Oh my god, and the pixel art is inc- holy shit. I'm already like, oh my god! Like, jeez. Alright. Oh my god, it's so pretty. It's so forkin' pretty. Look at the food! <laughs> yeah, give me some- give me some pixel food that looks delicious. Vibrant colors, constantly changing landscapes, amazing character and enemy design, scored beautifully by a guest composer. That guest composer? is none other than forking Yasunori Matsuda. Yeah, that's the guy who composed Chrono Trigger's music and worked so hard he gave himself stomach ulcers. He's done Xenogears, Xenosaga, Shadow Hearts, and even Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and 3. The point I'm trying to make with that is holy shit, please turn up the game music for this one. It is so good. Mitsuda-san's first guest track is right here in the Coral Cascades. This area is out of bounds for the demo, but if you stand here, you can listen to the music. Is there like a, a I'm gonna need I'm gonna need this damn album. I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need it. We start with a choice between the sun-based blade dancer Zale or the moon-based battle monk Valerie. Although this choice isn't actually a huge deal. You can freely switch between these two heroes basically any time. It doesn't affect the story, and it just allows for some different dialogue based on who is talking to who. Now the demo skipped us ahead a bit and showed us our first real town and dungeon while also introducing us to our three active party members, while teasing a fourth that may join us at some point. We can see that Zale and Valerie are joined by their best friend and personal chef Garl. Garl has an eye patch, which is cool, and we found out why almost immediately upon starting the full game. The heroes are set forth on their mission from the headmaster of an academy to purge the world of dwellers. These are seeds of evil planted by the mysterious alchemist, the Fleshmancer. Whoa. And that's the basics for this story as we get started. I can say that after the first true hour or so of the game, there is already a lot of subtle hints that there is more going on than we are told, and I can't wait to see where this story leads. I should also tell you that it's a sequel to the critically acclaimed video game The Messenger, but completely stands on its own when it comes to the plot, so you don't need to have played The Messenger first. If you did, there's going to be some neat references for you. There is no voice acting in Sea of Stars, unless you decide to watch my Sea of Stars series happening now on YouTube. And you know the three of us can take the one on Wraith Island. We don't need them. Prudence, Serlina. There is no telling what threats we may face in the future. Zale and Valerie were brought to Moon Cradle by the Great Eagle. It is not the place of the Headmaster to question such things, and neither is it yours. So how much is enough? What about Moyara? What about the twins? But the dialogue is short and witty. You won't be reading a novel like you would if you played Final Fantasy XIV, but you don't necessarily get to sit back and take in the sights either. Which leads me to the combat. One of the best parts of this game so far is the fact that you are actively engaged in its love letter to the turn-based RPGs that we grew up obsessed with. And it is worth saying, even if you don't love turn-based RPGs, I think you would still really enjoy this. It doesn't feel like you're sitting back and taking turns smacking things. It feels visceral. It's turn-based done to its best. If you enjoyed Legend of Dragoon or Super Mario RPG, this is certainly a game for you. 
All of our heroes have timings attached to their attacks. These timings allow you to do more damage or to even strike additional times. In fact, Valerie has a boomerang attack that feels strikingly similar to Mario's jump in his first RPG outing. There's even a trophy for bouncing her attack 25 times. Which, by the way, the trophy list? Awesome. Not only do the heroes have timings, but your enemies do too. And if you really want to master this game, you'll have to learn the timings for their attacks so that you can block them and prevent a little bit of damage. The game also gives you accessibility options in the form of relics. These relics do different things. One of them means that it increases your health 100%, or uh, the timing windows, or it shows that you were successful in your timed attack or your time blocked. Speaking of relics, I should mention this game is absolutely an RPG. There's a ton of equipment for your characters that can change how they battle, and the leveling system is no different. Every level that your team gets, which, by the way, levels are team-based, not individual-based, gives you a certain amount of stat increases. But it also gives you a choice between different stat bonuses that is ultimately up to you and how you want to build that character. So do you want Zale to be more of a magic user? You can pick bonus magic. Do you want him to smack enemies harder? You can pick bonus attack. This system is super, super appreciated and will definitely lend itself to multiple playthroughs, at least in my opinion and maybe just for me, but I'm going to play this game many times. Exploring this world is an absolute delight. Finding treasures in hidden chambers by exploring every nook and cranny releases the biggest of dopamine hits. There are a ton of puzzles to solve as well. Some are straightforward and simple, and some will have you returning to my YouTube channel that you've just subscribed to to see if I have the solution. Did you see what I did there? Basically, what I'm saying is, is please play this game. Sabotage did a wonderful job crafting an immersive and thoughtful experience, and it is absolutely worth the time to see what they've created. Sea of Stars is currently available on both PlayStation Plus Extra and Game Pass, so the barrier for entry is non-existent. If you do choose to purchase the game, which you should, it costs $35 and is available on most modern platforms. It's also worth mentioning that a physical copy has been confirmed, but we have not seen it yet. Uh, rumor is that it will be released in 2024. Oh, and I've put a link in the description to a super cool prologue that Sabotage posted on their Kickstarter in case you want a taste of the story that you're getting into. And that's it for our first impressions video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you are playing Sea of Stars and let me know if you want to watch me do a Let's Play style series of this game. Link to that will be on screen right now, hopefully. Thank you so much for watching and remember, never give up, never surrender. Goodbye, everyone.